Hello, College Success students. Hope you all are doing well. We are going to go over chapter two today. You should have already read this uh, chapter before viewing this, this lecture. Um, if you haven't yet, please uh, watch this recording after you've finished reading the text. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Let me share my screen and we'll get started. Make sure you have your, your books open to chapter two as you're going through this. Going to start in section two three a. So let's um, let's access the book there through the Moodle page. Reminder on how to do that. Over here's the book icon, and we're going to be open that full screen. Section two three a. Talking about mindfulness, mindset, and motivation. Uh, so mindfulness is being present uh, and paying attention to your attention. That sounds kind of funny, but you're 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 literally um, keying in on what you're focusing on, what you're what you're thinking about. You're thinking about your thinking uh, is mindfulness. And the the text mentions the ABCs of mindfulness. A is being aware of what's going on around you, inside of you. Um, Really, it's 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 about self awareness, knowing your feelings, your what's stressing you out, what what's you know, you know what's making you happy. B the B of mindfulness is just just being, uh, just being present in the moment, not dwelling on the past successes or failures, uh, not worrying about things in the future, um, just just being in in the present. The C is a, a little bit of a, a stretch there. It's seeing, um, seeing things and being observant so that you can uh, respond wisely. So seeing things around you, being being aware of what's going on in the in your circumstances, uh, the people around you, um, and just just again having an open mind and, and understanding what's go what's going on around you. Um, so some examples of mindfulness. Uh, some of these are in the text. Some are just some that uh, that you you may use. Uh, meditation, prayer, um, breathing exercises, taking just going outside, taking a walk. Um, these are things that you can do to stay in the moment, to stay mindful, to center yourself, and um, just kind of avoid uh, stress. Uh, being being mindful is it's an important practice uh, that that you need to do in in your life to like avoid stress, um, to uh, to pursue peace in your life, and you know all of us have have a, a lot of uh, requirements and and things that that buy for our attention and our time, and you know it it, it is worth taking some time away from that to. Um, just just to be quiet, to close your eyes, do a breathing exercise. Um, you know, when, when we do breathing exercises, you you sit up straight, you, you put your feet flat on the floor. Um, you know, use a nice supporting chair. Your arms, your your hands relaxed into your lap. Your shoulders are relaxed. Um, you can close your eyes. You can keep them open. And then you just breathe quietly, just breathe in, you know, you can be breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, that's one way, but just breathe naturally. Um, this is this is really what meditation or breathing exercise is. And I'd, I'd encourage you all to, to try this if you've never done it before, um, you know, before a class, before something that's, that's uh, you know, a little bit stress inducing that might be causing some anxiety is, is to do a breathing exercise. And if you're a person who prays, you know, you can you can add a prayer to that. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a praying person. I'll when I'm breathing in, I'll say part of the prayer in my head. When I'm breathing out, I'll I'll say the last part of the prayer. And it's just a, a way to kind of center my mind, my spirit, my soul, um, so that you know I'm I'm avoiding stress and I'm able to really put my best foot forward in whatever I'm doing. So mindfulness is an important skill in in academics and really in in a lot of different areas in life 
mindset. Um, this is really, really important for success in life, success academically in school. Um, and what it says is successful people have the ability um, to demonstrate both ability, just kind of natural talent and effort. All right. You, you got to have both. Um, and, and actually, you can develop more ability by increased effort. You know, we'll talk about that um, as we go through the lecture today. So there's this idea in that section, section two, three, that uh, two, three B rather, that geniuses are not just born. You, you know, obviously there are some traits, some gifts, some talents that are God given talents that, um, you know, you, you kind of, it's in the DNA, so to speak. But, but in a lot of ways, geniuses arise from uh, a lot of hard work over a long period of time, dedication to a certain skill or certain craft. Um, and the, te the text talked about a couple examples. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight these in section 2.3b. Um, let's see if we can find them here. So this idea uh, about Mozart here, what Mozart had, we now believe, was the ability to focus for long periods of time. The key factor separating geniuses from the merely accomplished is not a divine spark, it's deliberate practice. Top performers spend more time, many more hours, rigorously practicing the craft, um, practicing the craft. And then this idea from a, a master violinist, I think is, is really, uh, you know, an important idea behind this, this mindset uh, concept. A master violinist once said, I practiced the violin eight hours a day for 40 years, and they call me a genius. You know, if, if you put that kind of time and effort into a, a particular craft or skill or sport or um, academic endeavor, you're going to be really good at it, uh, you know, over that time. Just the, the difference is a lot of people aren't willing to sacrifice that time and attention for one task. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that's important to understand with this idea of mindset. Is it's not just, you know, oh, you have it or you don't, you know, I'm just not really good at math. No, it's something that you can you can get better at and become a master at if you put in the time and the effort. Um, and that really gets into the, uh, the difference between performers and learners. Those are some key concepts in, in this chapter. Um, performers are, are people who, who believe that your intelligence is set, your abilities are set when you're born, you know, or, or at, at a certain point in life. And, um, you know, that, that can't change no matter what you do that's that's all you've got that's that's what you're what you got is what you got whereas learners believe that intelligence can be learned and um abilities can be learned and you can actually change the dynamics in your brain your your abilities your talents by you know doing what those geniuses did putting in a lot of time over over many uh hours days months years so having a learner's mentality when you're approaching a subject in school, um, something that's difficult for you is really key. You know, if you have a performer's mentality and you you come into pre-calculus or calculus or or um, a science course and you're just like, oh, I just wasn't given the ability, you know, God didn't give me the ability to learn chemistry or physics or math. You know, that's just not me. Well, that that attitude is going to really affect the way you do in that class. Uh, but if you have a learner's mentality and, and you believe, as, as brain research has shown, that you do have the ability to, to learn new skills and to, to develop new pathways in your brain by practicing and by studying, um, you're actually going to get better at that skill, at that subject, um, at that, you know, whatever concept you're studying. Uh, so the last uh M in this section here is uh, motivation. What is motivation? Motivation is the drive to accomplish whatever, something, you know, in life, even in the midst of adversity. You know, you have to have this motivation to, to get through 
tough subjects, uh, to get through tough courses, to get through a degree in high school or college. You got to have that kind of motivation. We talked about grit last week. This is this is similar to that. Um, this section discussed the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic, extrinsic. You think about the word exit. You're you're leaving. You're going out. Um, extrinsic is is you're getting that motivation from outside okay so it's not in here it's not it's not inside yourself you're motivated by things outside of yourself so maybe it's um you're motivated by getting good grades you're motivated by your parents approval of you or your teacher's approval of you you're motivated by uh people's praise for your your sports ability um you're motivated by you know, being successful so that you can get a good job and make a lot of money. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with with those things. Uh, it, I think that's probably the most, you know, uh, normal, I'd say the, the most normal kind of motivations or, or most easy accessible motivations are those extrinsic motivations. They're, they're kind of at the front of our mind. Um, but you know, they, those kind of motivations don't always uh, lead to long-term effort and sustainability when we're trying to pursue a goal. Um, the intrinsic inside, those are, are motivations that come from inside ourselves. If, if we're motivated to learn a subject because we are really just genuinely interested in it, or we, we're motivated to learn because we, we've we decided that we want to be a learner. We want to grow and develop ourselves. Um, you know, that, that kind of motivation is going to be more sustaining over time than extrinsic motivation. Now, do I think it's impossible to completely separate yourselves from extrinsic motivations? I don't think so, honestly. Not, not in the world we live in. You know, is it is it wrong to want to get a good education so you can get a job and make money. No, you, you need to make money in our society. It's, it's, you can't live without it. Um, so those extrinsic values and, and motivations are gonna be there. Um, but the more you can develop intrinsic motivation, uh, motivation from inside yourself, from your own desires and, and passions to, to just learn and grow as an individual, uh, that, that's gonna help you sustain um, long-term uh, success and drive in a, in a course. So there's some some key concepts with motivation. One of them is autonomy. Um, you're going to be more motivated in a particular area if you have autonomy. Autonomy is is you have the authority. It came from you. You have the decision making power. Um, so it's it's your idea, something you actually want to do. It's not something that your parents, your your teachers, some outside source said you have to do this. You know, you, no, you made the choice. You decided which class to take, which major to pursue. You know, you're you're in a in a particular situation in life because you brought yourself there. That is autonomy. And the more you can have autonomy in the areas of your life, the more motivating uh, that's going to be for you. Um, similarly, value. You know, is it something that has value to you, or it's, it has worth to you? Um, if you don't have any value or you don't place any value in a particular class subject or, you know, academic pursuit, it's going to be really difficult to be motivated. Um, so again, this is something that is not, um, a static thing. It doesn't, it's not just set in stone. Okay. This, this particular subject has this much value. This subject has this much value. No, you can, you can change how much you value something. You can make a choice that you're going to have a learner's mentality, that you're going to have a growth mentality, and you're going to choose to value this subject. And, and the more you do that, the more you're going to enjoy it, the better you're going to do at it. And you're just going to have an all around more fulfilling experience in a particular course if you can place value in it. And, and that's really what this, this next um, you know, bullet is, is saying is you can choose and, and make a decision that you're going to try at least to find more value in the coursework that you're doing. Um, it's only going to help you, you know, so if you can adjust your attitude and try to not have negative thoughts and, and comments about a particular subject or class or teacher 
um, or whatever is it a job that you have, it's going to help you with motivation and having more joy and success in that. Um, and thirdly, competence. Now, there is some skill that's important, and that's what competence is. Is it something that you can do well? Um, it's something you have the ability to do. If you're not competent in an area, it can be very demotivating. It can be very deflating to your, your confidence. Um, but what do you do? What do you do if, if there's a particular class or subject that, that you don't feel like you're competent? Well, you, you have to do what learners do. You have to push through it and, at, and get extra help, you know, get tutoring, utilize your resources and become more competent. And, and that's really what this is saying. You know, you, you have that ability to develop skills and, and you're going to become more competent when you do that. Uh, we're going to look at figure 2.2 two in section 2.3D. So let's go there. So this talks about uh, just some, some practical um, strategies for focusing and, and being able to use your time well, avoid distractions. So here's just some, let's just run through them. You may have, you may have looked at this already, but um, look, let's look at it real quick. So eating healthy food, um, putting your phone in another room, sitting in a chair upright, you know, not, not doing your homework on your couch when you're, you know, you're laid down, your feet are up and you got Netflix on, um, making decisions about your surrounding um, in terms of where you're doing your work and how you're sitting up. You know, making lists, checking off lists, um, using headphones or, or earbuds or something to, blo to, to block out background noise, keeping your desk area organized and, and decluttered so that it's a good working environment. Um, you know, any, any kind of electronic uh, device, phone, um, you know, TV, music, a lot of times those things are going to be distracting. And some people, you know, maybe you can have music on and it actually helps you. You should analyze that and see if that's actually true for you or not. Um, make, set a timer, you know, put a, put a timer on and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do 30 minutes. I'm going to, I have a, this paper to write. It's due in a week. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And I'm going to just hunker down here and focus for the next 30 minutes. And then I'm going to give myself a 10 minute break. I'm going to get on Snapchat. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to jump on my trampoline in the background or shoot some baskets or whatever I like to do to, um, you know, just to take a, a mind break after I have put, you know, 30, 40 minutes of dedicated time into this subject. Um, frame a goal, you know, on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard, just put, put a goal up in front of your, your desk write it down and just keep it there so that you're seeing it, you know, daily, moment by moment throughout your day and, and recognizing, I want to get this done so I can check that off so it can be done. Um, I don't know about this one, bring your pet along. That seems like something that would be a little distracting, but hey, maybe if there's a, a pet that can be there with you while you're studying, that could be helpful. And reward yourself, you know, do, do something, you know, decide, hey, when I finish this assignment, when I turn this in, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the next episode of this show, or I'm going to go, you know, buy myself some ice cream or whatever it is. Do something special for yourself and, and keep that as a, as a uh, motivating factor. You know, so when you look at these things, this is one that I think is, is really could be very, very helpful for many of you is you just, you don't even have your phone. You know, these, these things here are, are walking computers, walking TVs, um, you know, encyclopedias, weather, like there's so much on here that can be distracting and, and vie for our attention. And if you just make a decision, you're literally going to put it out of your room because you know yourself, you know that if you're trying to do your work and trying to get things done, you're going to, you know, if you get frustrated or you run into a, a stumbling block on a problem, you're just going to pick this up and waste 10, 15, 30 hour, two hours without even knowing it. Um, so just put it out of your room have your timer on your phone. And when that goes off and you, you've, you've put in 30, 45 minutes, then you, you know, you get to use your phone for 10 minutes and then you get back to, to doing your work until it's done. Um, so, you know, I want to, I want you to think through these things and think about what are, what are some practical things that you could actually use 
um, in your life that um, would really help you stay focused and be efficient with your time. So, so really, really do that. Think through it and don't just think about it. Try it out. Put it into practice. Um, so I, I'd like you to, to really um, take that seriously because I, I think it'd be really helpful for some of you. You may not have thought of some of those things. Um, but that's that's what this class is about. It's about college success, school success. So try some new things uh, to help you be a little more efficient with your time. Um, and section 2.4 talks about attitude. We're going to talk a lot about attitude in this class and how important it is in your success in school. Um, this is interesting. This is research-based. Students who scored high on measures of hope, so there were some tests some you know psychological tests that that individuals did as a part of a study, and if they showed that they had they were person people who had high levels of hope, they were able to earn better grades. You know, so if you had a positive mentality, you have you're a hopeful person, um, you expect that you're going to be successful, and you have good hope for that. Uh, there's there's a, a better chance of you being successful in school. Um, and the opposite is, is also true. You know, if you're someone who, um, you know, you're just a negative person, you don't think you're going to do well, you know, why even study? It's, I'm just going to fail again. If that's your mentality, you're going to have, it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. You're going to end up struggling, um, in your coursework if that's the kind of attitude you have. So your attitude goes a long way in affecting how you're going to do, not just in a school setting, but in, in many different areas of your life, your, your attitude um, has a big effect. Uh, one, one thing that, that's important to understand is you're not, you're not a victim, okay? You, you could have some difficult circumstances, um, but whatever your circumstances are, you have choices to make. You get to decide how you're going to respond to those circumstances. Um, the, the text mentions this also that that you're gonna take responsibility for your actions. Don't blame others for the situations you're in um, and the you know the the lack of of success that you're having. You take responsibility for your success. And and I talked about this before. Um, avoid negative thinking, or you know, in in a, from a counseling perspective, we call this stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. You know, stinking thinking leads to depression, anxiety, um, just stress in general. And, and the, the more you give, you, you feed that in your mind, that stinking thinking, uh, the more it's going to affect the way you feel, the way, you know, your, your emotions, your, your actual physical body. And it's going to have a negative effect on your ability to be successful in, in whatever endeavor you're pursuing, whether it's academic or, um, or something else. So try to try to stay positive. Try to put a positive thing on, spin on things. The way you say things, the way you think about things, uh, avoid negative thoughts and thinking. Decide that you're going to use your mistakes um, as as something to learn from, as something to grow from, as something to overcome. Um, use them to your advantage. When you make a mistake, it, it's something. It's not. It's it's not a complete loss. It's something like, oh, you know what? This didn't work, so that's good. Now I know that that doesn't work, so I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. You know, you think of math as a prime example. When you make a mistake in math, it doesn't mean oh, just throw your hands up and give up. No, that that whatever you just tried didn't work. Analyze that mistake. Think. Look. Look at it. Think about what you did wrong. And, and learn from that and, and try to, to correct it moving forward. Um, and as opposed to focusing on negative thoughts, if you can be a, a grateful person, this is, again, this is research-based stuff. You know, th this, this book, this content is, is all based in research. The people who are thankful people have more joy and are more successful in life. You know, if you can foster that kind of, um, thankful, gracious, focusing on your blessings and not, not, you know, you know, think of, of the, the glass half, half full instead of half empty. That kind of attitude is going to have a positive effect on your life. All right, 2-4-A, uh, there's, there's some statements 
in sec, uh, the box two one, we're going to take a look at these. And I want you to think through, are these, are these kinds of excuses that you've made in your life before? Um, let's take a look. And I know, I know most of you, I think all of you are in high school right now. So we'll kind of take it to the high school level, but you know, this is applies to college as well. I, I thought that that college class or that high school class would be more interesting um, than it really is, or that, that these, these high school classes would be more interesting or college classes would be more interesting. I didn't learn anything in that class. Oh, this, this text, this, this, uh, this textbook is so dull. It's so boring. I don't even know why I'm going to read it. Oh my goodness, this professor, this teacher is just so boring. I'm just, I, I can't go to class anymore. I can't pay attention. It's just so boring. Um, why do I, why do I have enough to take this course? You know, what's the point? You know, another common one that I hear, uh, you know, it's, it's my professor's fault. It's my teacher's fault that I did so bad. They're just such a bad teacher. I just can't learn from them. These kinds of, of negative thoughts and comments are are really you know it's very harmful to your success and um can just have detrimental effects on your ability to, to do well so you know i want you to think through and ask yourself are these kinds of statements these kinds of thoughts do they do they find themselves in in your brain sometimes or in, are you coming out of your mouth sometimes if they do i want you to think about you know is it helpful thinking about that or saying that does it help you solve whatever problem you're having or get over the frustration you're you know that 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 you're dealing with um and what what kind of attitude or approach could you take that's different than this um you know maybe a, a 180 degree change that could actually be more helpful for you um, in those situations So again, your attitude really comes out from your thoughts and the things that you say. Um, and you just got to, you got to check that negative attitude. It's, it's not going to lead to good things. It's only going to make things worse. Um, it, it, your attitude plays a serious role in your success in life and in school. All right. Lastly, we're almost done here. We're going to, I'm going to talk about focus goals and that's going to lead us right into um, going over the academic plan, which is one of your 100 point syllabus assignments. So we're going to, we're going to cover the focus goals and go right into the academic plan. Then we'll be done. Uh, focus goals. So what, uh, a good goal should be focused. And there's a, there's an acronym here. So when you're making goals in life, short-term, long-term, they should be focused. The F stands for fit. Your goals need to fit who you are your values, your character, your goals in life. Um, if they're not a good fit for you, if they're someone else's goals and, and, and you're thinking you should apply them to you, it, it's just not gonna work long-term. They need to fit who you are. Your goals in life, you know, the O stands for ownership. You have to own them. And again, this goes back to something I, I, I just said. It can't be someone else's goals. It can't be your parents' goals for you. If, if, it's, if it's not something... It could start out that way. You know, maybe your parents want you to, to be a doctor or an engineer or a teacher or whatever it is. Um, it could start out as their goal, but if it doesn't become your goal, if you don't eventually own it, you're not gonna last, you know, pursuing that goal. It's just not gonna work out. Your goals need to be concrete. Uh, they need to, to be real, tangible, detailed goals that are measurable. If, if a goal is not measurable, what I mean by that is, you know, there's a certain, there's certain aspects that have to be accomplished. And when those things are accomplished, you can see that it's done, you know, and you can check it off a box and say, yep, that goal was accomplished. If you can't do that with a goal, it's not measurable. Um, so, you know, a goal that would be not measurable would be something like, you know, I, I want to be a really successful person. Well, okay, how do you define success? That's that's really vague. How are you going to know when you've achieved that goal? If you don't put some details to it and you don't make it a little more concrete, um, you're really going to have a hard time knowing if you've accomplished your, that goal. So goals need to be concrete, detailed, uh, and measurable. 
your goals need to be useful. Uh, they need to serve some purpose. It, and, and that that purpose should be tied to who you are and, and, and who, what you want to accomplish in life. Um, so a good goal is going to be useful and serve, serve some purpose. And the, the last thing, the S, is it needs to be a stretch goal. Um, no, you know, it, that's not necessarily true. It doesn't have to stretch you. But if it doesn't, you're selling yourself short. If you're not challenging yourself with your goals, if, if, if you know that you have the potential, um, you know, to, to go into a career where you're really using your, your science brain and your math abilities and, and, you know, technology, and you're just like, no, you know, I could do that, but it's just gonna be too hard. I think I'll just settle for choice C, D, or E. And, and you're not gonna be challenged there. You're just gonna work at a, at a desk job, you know, doing whatever this person tells you to do. And you're, you know that you're not using your abilities fully. Um, you know, that that's going to be demotivating over time. That's going to be really deflating to your joy in life if, if you're not being stretched and, um, you know, and challenging yourself in the things that you're, you're uh, pursuing. So focus goals. Your goals need to fit who you are. You need to take ownership of them. They need to be concrete detailed, measurable. They need to serve some purpose. They need to be useful and they need to stretch you and challenge you. That leads right into the academic plan. The academic plan, again, is one of your assignments that's not part of uh, Cengage, uh, the APLIA, midterms, any of those assignments. It's a separate assignment. Um, the, let me stop sharing here and Open this up. So actually I will share here. So if you look here, uh, the academic plan form is posted right underneath the syllabus in the class um, class page. And when you click on that, you can open that up. Let me make sure that I'm sharing that with you. Okay, so this is the academic plan. It's not that difficult of assignments. Um, you're, you're really basically thinking through some short-term and long-term goals, and you're making a plan, an academic plan with an actual Henry Ford College counselor. Um, they're academic plans. So you're gonna come up with some potential classes that you'd be taking towards your educational goal, okay? So you can use this form to do it. And it, you see the focus goals are right here. We just went over those. Um, so you're gonna come up with some long-term and short-term goals. Um, your long-term goal would be your career goal, okay? So whatever it is right now doesn't have to, you don't have to have it all figured out but if you had to choose right now come up with a, a long term career goal even if you're undecided just just start with something okay if you had to choose today you know i'm going to be a physician's assistant or a chemical engineer or a doctor nurse lawyer whatever choose something and that's going to be your long term goal okay and you need to make sure that it fits the focus criteria all right does it, does it fit you? Can you take ownership of it? Is it concrete, useful? Does it stretch you? So think through and make sure that it fits those criteria, your long-term goal. And then you're going to come up with some short-term educational goals. Now, these, these are going to be pretty simple to come up with. It's, it's not, not something you have to think through very much. Your short-term goals are, are going to be probably educational goals. You know, one of them needs to be, you got to get your high school diploma. Okay, so that's that's one of them that all of you should have. You need your high school diploma. And then you need to think through what your long term goal is. Does it require a bachelor's degree? Does it require a certification? Does it require a career focused associate's degree? What 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 do you need to do um, uh, in order to get into that career? So maybe one of your short term goals is to attend Henry Ford College and, and take two years worth of classes towards your desire to be a mechanical engineer. 
And then your next goal is to your, your last short-term goal. So, so maybe this first one is get a high school diploma. Next one, attend Henry Ford College for a couple of years to get some requirements done. And then the third one, finish a bachelor's degree, transfer to Michigan State, and finish your bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, okay? So you're going to put some estimated completion dates for those goals when you think you can get those done. That's this first page. You know, you need to think through that and fill that out yourself. And as you go through this, you're going to think through what your college major is going to be. Um, does it require a four-year college degree? Uh, what colleges might you attend? Um, do you have to transfer or not? Do you need an associate's degree or certificate? Okay, so we're going to think through these questions, all right? Um, lastly, and this is kind of the biggest chunk of the academic plan, is this is what you're going to do with an academic counselor or a, um, a, an HFC counselor. You're going to come up with four semesters of courses that will go towards your career goal. So again, if you want to go into medicine or education or business, engineering, whatever it might be, you're going to meet with a, an HFC counselor and you're gonna tell them. First, you need to tell them you're a high school student right now and you're taking college success. Let them know that you're doing the academic plan assignment so they understand you're not, you know, a full-time college student yet, all right? You're just, you're not actually planning courses that you're necessarily going to be taking next semester. You're just planning courses as part of this assignment. So please let them know that. Um, it'll help them understand what you're doing. Um, so you're going to uh, go through and come up with four semesters worth of classes and the, the HFC counselor is going to help you pick which classes you're going to take. They'll tell you how many credits they are and, and help you fill this out. Okay, so that's, that's basically what you're going to do for this academic plan. You fill out the first two pages on your own. You answer these, two, these questions as you go. And then you're going to meet with a counselor. And they're going to help you come up with the classes that you need in order to, uh, to get two years or four semesters worth of coursework done towards your long-term career goal. Now, they might not split it up like this. They might not give you four semesters all organized in, into separate semesters. They may just give you a link to um, the Henry Ford College uh, plan for a science associate's degree or a biology associate's degree if you're going to go pre-med or a business associate's degree or, or pre-engineering. If that's what they give you, then that's what you turn in, and that's fine. If they don't split it up, split it up like this for you, that's fine. Maybe they give you a transfer plan. Maybe you said, I, I'm, I'm planning to go to Wayne State or U of M Dearborn. Those schools have really nice transfer plans. I may have showed you this already, I believe, um, that are lined up with that career goal and that major with the courses you would take at Henry Ford College. Maybe they just give you a link for that. If that's what they give you, that's what you're going to submit. So you don't necessarily have to have this all filled out if, if the counselor gives you some other resource that gives you the courses you're going to take um, at Henry Ford College if you were to come here uh, towards your career goals, okay? So that's what the academic plan is. It's filling this all out, meeting with a counselor, coming up with coursework, two years worth of courses or four semesters worth of courses um, that you would take if you were to go to Henry Ford College towards your career goal, okay? Um, so one of the assignments you're going to have for this week is to make an appointment with a Henry Ford College counselor, but I'll talk more about that in the assignment video. Um, that is all I have to share for this week. Again, if you have questions or need additional help, please see me in office hours or send me an email. Have a great week, everyone.